All right. So as we are to consider our graphs, we still need to work with more question papers. So that's a typical exam that we are going to work with on question number five, where we are given study the graphs below. So we are given to study these graphs that we are given. All right. Let's consider the graphs that we have in this case. We have got uh, the first one, which is a horizontal line that we are given. This is a horizontal line. So the horizontal line passing through the y-intercept of three is given as y is equal to three. All right, so do not consider this. This is just mistakenly written. Uh, it is supposed to be here. Y is equal to x. That is where it is supposed to be. So these are two graphs that we are given, uh, two lines, which are straight lines, y is equal to x, and this of uh, y is equal to three. Remember, if uh, we are talking of the origin, the x-axis, that's y is equal to. So all these horizontal lines, we are going to represent them as y is equal to the value where it passes on. So this three is on this point. So that's y is equal to three. That is the interpretation that we can see there. So question 5.1 is what are the coordinates of P, the intersection of the two graphs? So P is the intersection. Uh, this P that we are seeing is this point here. That is the point P. So what are the coordinates, the value of X and the value of Y? So remember that at the point of two, uh, at the point of intersection of these two graphs, they are supposed to be equal at the point of intersection. So if they are equal, we can take advantage of this y, which is equal to three. Already we are given there, y is equal to three. And we are saying these two graphs, they are equal. This one of y is equal to x. If y is equal to three, it means also x must be equal to three because they're, they're the same. In place of y, here you substitute three. Three is equal to what? x. So at this point p, it means x at this is three then y at this other part is three. That is at this intersection. Remember a point, like I said, it is given of x and y. So meaning to say in this case, x is equal to three and y is equal to three, just like x and y like that. That is how you indicate a, a point. All right, so that was the first part in that case, just to obtain uh, the intersection. 5.2, you're given on the Cartesian plan below this plan that you're given, the graph of y is equal to minus 2x plus 4 is shown. So this is the graph of y is equal to minus 2x plus 4. So what's the reason of us having this graph? Okay, there's nothing here, just given. They are now saying 5.21. On the annexure provided, draw the straight line graph. All right represented by y is equal to minus 2x minus 4. So look what is happening here. Indicate all intercepts and label your graph CD. All right. We have got a graph here, which is y is equal to minus 2x plus 4. The only difference that we are seeing is that other one is having a negative there. It is now having a negative. But remember, we are supposed to have the same line of the same consideration. So this is the line that is simply drawn on the other hand. But if you do not understand that, guys, you, you, you know your graphs, how to draw your graphs. So do not even worry about this if you do not know how to interpret from this one. Because this one has nothing to do with that graph. You can interpret from there to say, okay, if this y minus 2x plus 4 is like that, what about this one? Okay, so do not even worry about that. This one is already there. It's not yours. Just leave it like that. Y is equal to minus 2x plus 4. This was the one that we given before. So in order for us, we are going to focus with the graph of um, y is equal to minus 2x minus 4. Remember, this is the graph that we are being asked to uh, draw in this case on, the, on this part. And we are supposed to label it CD. Y is equal to minus 2x minus four all right depending with how you are going to have your graph remember this is also in your hands are you going to use the table method are you going to use the dual method the dual intercept 
if you are using the table method, this is what you're going to have. Uh, let us just have two things here. If you're using the table method, remember we just need, uh, like I said, you can have as many values as you want from these X values minus five up to five, you can have as many values as you want. That is not necessary at all. Three values are enough. Just choose any three. Just for the verification purpose, three values are enough for you to produce a straight line. Three values uh, of X are enough. So from these X values that we are given, we are just going to pick any three values of our choice. That is your choice. And also considering your equation like, okay, these values, am I going to have them corresponding on the graph? If I choose a value like a minus two and so forth. Okay, we can choose the minus two on X minus two. We can choose our X to be a zero there. We can also choose our X to be a positive two. But if we choose to be a positive two, that is going to give us a lot of values which are not in that side because also you must consider output there. It's going to be like something like minus six and we do not have minus six on our graph. So in this case, let us just avoid uh, some of the values, even two values. Now you see the importance of the uh, dual intercept method. It does not uh, limit you when it's like that. So you can just try to move a little bit, minus four. We move to minus two and we move to a zero. So you can choose more negative values there, minus two and a zero. All right, just these values, they are enough. Let's substitute and see in place of X. If X is minus four, then Y is going to be what? Minus two times in place of X, that is minus four, minus a four. So that means we've got uh, minus, minus, which is a plus. So that's eight minus four, which is a four. So that was going to be a four. If our X in this case is um, uh, considering our X to be a negative two, we're just gonna substitute a negative two in place of X. And if you're using your calculator, you can just substitute a negative two. That will be a positive four. Minus two, minus two, that's a positive four minus four, which is what? Which is a zero in that case. Then if X is equal to zero here, that's zero minus four, which is uh, minus four. So that's it. So with these points, you can easily mark the points, uh, the X versus Y in this case. X is minus four and Y is a positive four. Minus four, positive four. So X is minus four and Y is a positive four. They do meet at a certain point here. Where they meet, you are going to mark a point there. So that's minus four versus a four. Minus two versus zero. It simply means X is at minus two. There is nothing to worry about Y there. So X is at minus two. We have got zero minus four. We do not have anything on X. So we've got the Y value, which is at minus four. That is our Y intercept at uh, minus four. So these are the points that you are going to use uh, in that case uh, of your choice. You just choose any points of your choice uh, that you can work with. Then from there, you can join uh, using the ruler. So in this case, I'm just gonna use a line, but uh, supposed to use a ruler uh, to join these two graphs. All right, so that is something of this nature. Passing through the points that you have uh, indicated on your, on your diagram. So that is uh, something of this nature that we are going to have, something like this from what you are given. And remember, we are being asked to label this graph CD. So we're just gonna call it uh, CD, just like what we are given on the other one. Uh, which is A, B, this one is C, D. So that was from the table method. You can just have that way, which is fine. Uh, or we can simply use the dual intercept method, which is also uh, uh, the easier part that we could have actually uh, worked with in that case, mm -hmm. uh, using uh, the dual intercept method. All right. So from the dual intercept, we just do understand two things. What are the two things? We are working with the x-axis where y is equal to a zero. And the other part, we are working with the intercept in the y-axis where we do understand that in that case, x must be equal to what? A zero. So that's the dual intercept method. When x is zero, what is the value of y? Just ask yourself that, okay? 
when x is equal to zero, what is the value of y you substitute? In place of x, that is y is equal to minus two times a zero minus four. That's a zero there, minus a four, which is minus four. So meaning to say y is minus four, that's a point x, it's zero, y is minus four, or just focus to say x is zero. So what is important is the y at minus four. So if you check here, you are going to mark your point in the y-axis at minus four, which is exactly where we marked the point before. So as you can see, it passes through the same point. In the uh, x-axis, we're talking about the x-intercept. That is a condition where y is equal to zero. When y is equal to zero, you substitute into the equation that zero is equal to minus two x minus four. You solve for x. You solve for x. So let us determine x. We can take this minus 2x this side. It becomes a positive. So 2x is equal to minus 4. Divide by negative uh, by positive 2. Both sides, x is going to give us a negative 2, which is the x-intercept. When y is 0, remember, we are talking of what? The x-intercept. That is what we are referring to. When x is equal to 0, we are talking about what? We are talking about the y-intercept. So we marked the value in the y-intercept at minus 4. The x-intercept is at minus... x-intercept means in the x, in the x-axis. Where x is minus 2, you mark your point. So as you can see, the line was simply going to pass through the same way that we drew this one that we used uh, from our table method. It is going to give you the same line. But as you can see, the dual uh, intercept method was a little bit direct because we, there was no like, okay, these values are, are they going to be part of the range? Because we are not given, like if you were using positive values, you were going to notice that they were not going to be part of your graph. So you were supposed to focus with more in the negative region so that you would obtain exactly a suitable straight line. So that's it. Three marks for that. Let us consider another part that we are given. What can you deduce about the two graphs A, B, and C, D? Give a reason for your answer. What can you deduce? What can you, what can you say about these two lines? What can you conclude about these two lines? All right. These two lines, as we can see, they are maintaining some distance throughout. the By side, by just looking into the graph, we can see that the distance in between these two lines is the same. Let us go back to our geometry. What is it that we understand about lines which leave the same distance throughout? They are parallel. These lines, they are parallel. So in this case, we are simply saying AB is parallel to CD. They maintain same distance throughout. They have got same distance uh, in between. We are talking about uh, the same distance uh, in between. In between. Uh, these two lines that we are given. In terms of their equation alone, remember this line, we, we are supposed to write its equation, y is equal to minus 2x minus 4. In terms of their equations alone, we can deduce also that these two lines are parallel in terms of the equations. Line CD, its equation is given as y is equal to minus 2x plus 4. That's minus 2x plus 4. That's our line CD. Sorry, line AB. This is AB. This is line AB. Sorry for that, guys. This is line AB. Line AB. This one. Minus 2x plus 4. Then the line CD, on the other hand, this one. We have got its equation. All right? We have got its equation. The line of CD, uh, the equation y is equal to minus 2x minus 4. These values here, if they are the same, this one, that is affecting this one, that is affecting X. If they are the same, it means the two lines are parallel. We are talking about what? The gradient Y is equal to MX plus C. M is the gradient, which is this value here, the minus two is the gradient. So in this case, two lines are supposed to be parallel uh, if they have the same gradient, they have same gradient. 
we have the same gradient. So that is what we can also uh, present in a geometrical manner. They have the same gradient. M represents the gradient. And if two lines, you've got these values that are the same, they are parallel. Y is equal to X minus two and Y is equal to X plus one. I don't need to draw these two graphs. I need to check what is happening on X. There is a one here. There is a one here. So these two lines, they are parallel to each other. They have got same gradient. That is the concept. So these are the typical questions that you might be given. You just need to work with uh, more questions. As we can see, there was a total uh, of six marks, I think. Yeah, that is, we just need to work with more, more questions, revise as much questions as you can uh, so that you do understand how are they going to ask you even in the final presentation, in your final tests, they are going to ask similar questions like this. So the more you revise your question papers, the more you understand the idea or the mind of the examiner. By knowing the mind of the examiner, you are good to go. All right, so that's it, guys, from Maths Zone African Motives. Till we meet again.